Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Now, what, uh, about four or five weeks ago? No, it wasn't that long ago, was, was it? it? About two, three weeks ago, maybe? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. May, I think June's? it was May. But anyway, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we got a call from uh, Alex uh, AG Entertainment out in Atlanta and said he had some uh, people that wanted to come up and talk about what's going on overseas. Don't even attempt Anything. to say their names because you're going to mess no, it not, up. I'm not. Okay. That, that wasn't my <laughs> That's why I'm setting it up. And Ethiopia. So we, we did the interview and it was a mixed response. Some people... Uh, Mixed response. Charlemagne and I really don't know what was going on, so we were trying to bring up people to discuss what was going on, and we took a picture with uh, their flag, and some people was like, it was fine, and some people were, were mad at that, and then Charlemagne got a phone call. Mm-hmm. From the homie Tiffany Haddish. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the the father of the late, great Nipsey Hussle. I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your name either, Pops, because I'm... The Wit Askadom. The Wit Askadom. Mm-hmm. The Wit Askadom. And, you know, they, they was putting me on to some things, so we have them up here today. To talk about it. Exactly Absolutely. what's going on. M- Mr. Askadom brought some people with him. Mm-hmm. What's well, your name, who do you have Queen? With you? My name is Ladette. Ladette? And I'm from D.C. Okay. Um, Ladette, and I'm from D.C. Mm-hmm. And... You brother, I'm um, Simon Tesfamarium. Okay. Yep. okay. So, so what's really going on between Eritrea and Ethiopia? Um, actually, um, uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea just uh, signed uh, their peace deal about three years ago, and this has been uh, probably um, something that Ethiopians and Eritreans have been looking forward to uh, to have these two nations um, form peace and uh, work towards uh, the betterment of their uh, country. So um, in regards to actually what has happened, it's it's actually positive that we're actually moving to a... What was the uh, war about? What was the, the fighting about? Um, that's before going the peace on, treaty. Mm-hmm. That's going on right now or before? Both. Um, well, before, Eritrea was trying to gain her independence, rightfully... Um, for the historical uh, context that was uh, there, so mm-hmm. uh, now that's that has happened, and um, and then there was a war between Eritrea and Ethiopia after independence, uh, really because of a disagreement between the ruling party at that time and the uh, Eritrean government. Um, right now, um, that has been squashed, and Brother Lisa Surly Love has occurred. Uh, but then we have another conflict that's going on right now, um, which is um, uh, in Tigray, northern part of Ethiopia. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Mm-hmm. Now, did we do anything wrong in that interview? Was there misinformation during that interview we did a couple of I mean, of that's years? not from us. That would have been from... I'm just asking because yeah, you know, yeah. people were mad at us. They said we shouldn't have been holding the flag. Like, you know, that's mm-hmm. why I'm asking. But did we do anything wrong? Was there any misinformation in that interview at all? Uh, yeah, um, I think something that we have to like set the record straight about is that that flag is of the TPLF uh, party, which stands for the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front. And basically, um, the war that she talked about, the war in Somalia, the war in Eritrea, um, the chaos that has been re- uh, just sowed in Ethiopia for these last 30 years is a result of TPLF. And that flag represents that, that front. And so... Um, Basically, the conflict today is a result of what they have done. So when they came on and you mentioned misinformation, we should go further and say disinformation Mm -hmm. because what they did is you have activists from TPLF actively telling people online, let's go out there and lie so that we can get a humanitarian intervention in in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, um, in, in the name of the Tigrayan people. This is not for the Tigrayan people. This is to save TPLF, which has terrorized the region, which is literally a, a, a terror, a terrorist group. And so, um, and by the way, they're documented as a terrorist group by a, a database, the Global Terrorism Database, um, which is financed by the Homeland Security Department here in America. Mm. So, truly a terrorist group. And the thing is, is that they've worked to maintain um, the U.S. ruling class interest in that part of the world which has destroyed Africa, to be honest with you. Wiped Libya off the map, destroyed Somalia. You can go down the list country after country. The things that they have done have just, uh, you know, been horrible. So they found a partner in the region named TPLF, 
that was willing to sell itself because they're a minority regime. So when I say minority regime, 6% of the people are Tigrayan, good peoples, ancient history. Everybody should know about them. Um, many ethnic groups in Ethiopia, 80 of them, they're one of them. They only represent 6%. But TPLF is even less than 6%. I mean, they represent an elite bourgeois sort of uh, group um, that has robbed the people blind. Um, so for, thir for I'm talking, they've stolen 2.6 billion a year um, from the Ethiopian people, while their own people in Tigray have, are, were living on food aid. Uh, 1.5 million people depend on food aid. So my point is, is that TPLF has been a nightmare for the region. They started this conflict. We can get into the details and all that stuff, but they've been pushing all this propaganda because um, they lost a war in three weeks. They were knocked out. It's like, imagine somebody uh, is talking trash to you, you know, and then the second you say, you know, they step to you, you just punch them in the face and they get knocked out and then just start running into the crowd and saying, hey, you're, you're against the crowd. You're against the whole community. Mm -hmm. No, um, they are against the people of Ethiopia, the people of Eritrea. And for fear of talking on too long, I'm going to leave it at that because really this is what needs to be clarified. No, and take the time. Take the time to explain. I, I need to know. So I just, I just want to say the what country are we banned from? Time. Are we banned from anywhere for holding that flag up? You, you no, can, no, no, no. This, 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 this <laughs> is the yeah, this but it was misinformation that, that came last This week. is what the misinformation that people maybe there was uh, complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, TPLF uh, at the beginning was helped by Eritrea during the revolution when they start because uh, Ethiopia was under the control of Haile Selassie and then after that uh, by the military government. So Eritreans believe that the Tigrians, since they are oppressed people, they will be able to uh, help all Ethiopian uh, nationalities together to solve their problem. So no ethnic group, no, that is the beginning. So later on, they had a hidden agenda. The hidden agenda was instead of, uh, they are historically, they are Ethiopians. They cannot be separated, they are Ethiopians. But they oppressed Ethiopians like other uh, oppressed in, in the region. So uh, it was, they was, uh, had agenda to help Ethiopians to be together united for the benefit of all Ethiopians. But they are hidden agenda 1986, I believe, or in the 80, they want to be independent from Ethiopia. They are to create a nation, which is uh, impossible. Right. So, but the reason they did that is they want to be helped by Eritrean, by lying, they say going to be in benefit of Ethiopians. And then later on, uh, they completely uh, changed their idea and we helped them to get the, uh, in power in Ethiopia. So they become the ruling party. After that, uh, they took all the money, they took all the benefits, all high positions, they put their own region and uh, they start uh, making division between Ethiopians so they can fight, divide and rule, divide uh, all the regions together, mm -hmm. uh, Amhara, Oromo, and everything. So this, uh, when you divide and rule, divide and control, uh, that's where the Ethiopian people start uh, revolution. And uh, when they start a revolution to overthrow them, they start killing them, they start torturing them, they start uh, doing all kinds of crime. So the people uprised. So all Ethiopians, almost there was in a brink of failed mm -hmm. nation. Mm -hmm. But the people after they rise, uh, they elected the Dr. Abi, which bring the peace. And then he brought them together and then they start moving. Uh, they make a peace with Eritrea for the first time and uh, they start uh, also create peace in the Horn of Africa. This, they didn't like it. So they want to get back to power mm -hmm. by helping by superpowers or other who have interests through them. They are just running dogs. So 
That's why uh, they went to the uh, what you call it the, 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 the uh, what they when they were shooting the the, the, oh, the Northern uh, Command National, National Defense, Defense, Force. Defense of Ethiopia. So it's basically like saying um, you know someone from the, a region like uh, New York just mm -hmm. goes and attacks its own Air Force base or wow. you know National Defense Force and that's what they did on November 3rd they attacked the National Defense Force of Ethiopia which is located in the northern part of Tigray and in the hopes of returning to power so remember they were in power for 27 years controlling Ethiopia dominating the economy everything and stolen and embezzled millions and millions and trillions of dollars, really, because we're seeing the money floating around in D.C., where I'm from, mm -hmm. and all the lobbyists are being paid by them mm -hmm. to create all this news on a daily basis mm -hmm. about how they are being victimized when they are actually the ones who have abused Ethiopia and the rest of the Horn Africa um, with the power and money that they've embezzled for the last 27 years. So basically, now the fight is not really about people to people. It's about dictators wanting to come back after 27 years, after the people have thrown them out. And it's a sad situation because um, uh, news articles and the Western media is putting it like, there is, you know, genocide and there is rape and there's this going on and this, you know, and Africans are killing each other and raping each other. But that's not what it is. What we really need to understand and stand up just for. Talk little, just talk a little closer to the mic so we can hear Is um, uh, really understand and stand up for is it's dictators who are being supported by the Western powers mm. to basically loot their own countries. And this is like Black Lives Matters Africa, because mm. why are, you know, dictators who are like thugs like this, who steal money, who dictate, who kill, murder their own people to stay in power, being supported by big, you know, uh, Western world countries? Why are they? Because they, are, they become the running dog for their errands, because the people don't like them. Why is it not impressed as much? Because we don't see anybody talking about it or nor do we see it, hear it, nowhere. Oh. So what you hear in the press is a lot of it is about victims, about people being killed or people being um, raped, you know, the chaos that happens when two, uh, one basically is a terrorist organization and one is the government that are trying to protect the citizens and protect the country. Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of the news talking about what's happening to the people but you don't get the story behind it. Right. So, so actually for us who follow this stuff regularly, there's an enormous amount of news coming out every day, more than it, we're typically accustomed to since November. And a lot of the news is just straight disinformation. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's, it's, it's a joke. I mean, I try, it's, it's a serious matter, but it comes down to a joke because they're saying there are massacres, right? Um, and then for, for instance, we'll have like the, the massacre that took place in Aksum, a historic city in Tigray. Um, on November 29th, they said that there was a, a, this massacre of 750 people. Um, ever since then, or the, the thing that they don't tell you is that the very next day, they had a huge festival that's broadcast live on national TV um, where they're saying everything is great and uh, you know, all is well. But if you read the reports on what came out then, they said that there was the stench of death in the air, that there was mass grave, like uh, bodies were being await awaiting to be put into mass graves. So how do you have the very next day this, this type of thing? I mean, I can go down the list. There's so many different things like this. Um, you have in another example, um, there was a massacre, a so-called massacre in um, the, an area called Dangalat at a church, Mariam Dangalat. Um, and what they said was that, uh, or that there was 250 people roughly that were killed. And you have on CNN, CNN uh, journalist Nima al Bagar, who right now is leading a, uh, e an EU-US uh, discussion on this issue to bring R2P to Eritrea, which is a responsibility to protect and basically war on Eritrea and Ethiopia. She says, she has the CNN video uh, where they're, they're, they're testifying what actually happened. And there's this villager on camera. Well, what, they, what she doesn't know, actually she does, but she ignores, is that there was... The full length of that video, if you look, 
the person, the villager is actually being coached and, and saying, uh, you know, some number for how many people are killed. And then the guy's like, no, 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 say some other number, say some other number. And then the, the guy like changes the number. And it's just like right in front of your face. It's so blatant. And we, we approached Nima al Bakr and she just ignores this. CNN ignores this. And this is the mainstream narrative because they, they want to ramp up a war against African people. If you are about Pan-Africanism, if you believe in black people worldwide should be standing up and have dignity, self-respect, national sovereignty, if you want them to come together in an alliance that actually, um, you know, where, where we can be proud as African peoples worldwide, um, you have to stand with Eritrea. You have to stand with the peoples in the Horn of Africa. You have to stand with Ethiopia and Somalia as well, too. Somalia is rebuilding itself again. So everybody should have their eyes on this part of the world and should be saying no to any type of intervention that they're talking about against Eritrea or Ethiopia or Somalia. Um, I think, honestly, um, when we talk about resistance and we talk about the history of African resistance, I think, um, uh, you know, our brother, uh, Dawit, you know, Nip's dad, he can, he can tell you everything he's fought for and all the stuff that's gone on connecting yesterday to today. That struggle, because he was there in the streets, as you saw, and they, his, his photo was manipulated. It was taken wrongly last week or whenever the, the interview was, mm -hmm. saying that he supports this or they suggested that he supports this. No, he, he does not support what was said in that last interview. And you will see from his own voice what he believes, what his son believes, uh, you know, believed in, 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 and basically it's about sovereignty, Nash, uh, it's about self-reliance. How many times has Nipsey talked about self-reliance? So I'm, I'm hoping maybe he can speak on this. Yeah, I see the, the TPLF for the first time, uh, actually TPLF is a terrorist organization. The reason I'm saying that is, uh, let's say they use you know, the sympathy, they need a sympathy. And they use massacre, rape. You know, any human being in this world, when you hear that, beginning with me, I don't care what country, if you hear child has been molested, if you hear uh, atrocity has been happening to, uh, rape, all these things, the first thing that comes to your mind is, this shouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. So that's why they use this game to get a sympathy from the rest of the world. So uh, I would say to them, everything that you've seen, everything that they created, is just like a, a TPLF version of Universal Studio. All the fake things happen where? In Universal Studio, <laughs> and they make us believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? That's what exactly what they did. They created in the studio and they did this, and then they distributed to the whole wallet. So who else? Everybody's going to say, this shouldn't be happening, including you guys over here. That's why you brought them. This is happening here. This shouldn't be happening. And then they was prepared to lie to you guys and to lie to the rest of the world. But the truth always, it might take time, but the truth always come. That's right. Yeah, so that's what we are here to make sure that, uh, you know, the truth should be coming out. So when, when you hear people, you know, claiming there's genocide and violence happening in Ethiopia, and then there's other people claiming that the stories are faking us all propaganda as outsiders, how do we determine the truth? Yeah, that it, it is uh, like, uh, the problem is, you know, and uh, I've been here, living here a long time. So people, uh, the family, the majority of American people, they're trying to feed their family, they train uh, two families, they go to work, they leave their children with a babysitter and everything. So they don't have any time to go watch TV. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if they watch the TV, there is uh, CNN, uh, the big thing, and then they are co associated with the corporation. Uh, they don't want to let uh, people, uh, you know, hear the, the right uh, true story, what's going on. So they are linked with the government, they are linked with the corporation so that the people make them busy to run their life. So all day they come and see in six o'clock in the morning, uh, news, uh, and then, you know, briefly they tell them this, this, and then and there is the gatekeeper. If the gov their government, they don't want to be broadcasted or be known what's happening in the world, then, uh, you know, there's not, they won't let them know. So they have to research and uh, go to other media to get their information. 
So can that's why they are misinformed, and yeah. uh, you know that's why you have to do your own uh, research to get the truth. Mm-hmm. But can like I said, the reason is they keeping us busy with our life mm-hmm. to put the food in the table. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's just going with it. Mm-hmm. I want to follow up with what Pop said. Um, so on your question, you know, does you know do we have atrocities? Uh, right now, in 2020, in the U.S., we had 19,000 people killed of firearms. This is some serious stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You don't hear the Western media constantly talking about 19,000 people have been killed because of gunshots. Mm-hmm. So, just like that, in Ethiopia, is there atrocities happening right now? Absolutely. Are there people being victimized because these people these people want to come back to power and these people are not going to benefit the people that are you know the poor innocent people that are uh, down there that they're sacrificing so yes there's obviously when there's chaos there's looting there's rape there's you know um, uh, people being caught up in between so yes obviously there is but is there propaganda to escalate that situation, to exaggerate that situation so that somebody can get the, a leg up is the question. And that's absolutely right. And what's frustrating to me as an Ethiopian American is when I vote for my, you know, for my representatives and I see that the news that they be they are fed about Africa in general comes from people who do not have any idea about Africa and who are basically told what to report. And we're not telling our stories. So the problem is, what is the story behind it is what Mm -hmm. people do not understand. What is the story behind it? And the bottom line is we have a terrorist group who used to be a ruler 27 for 27 years who have pretty much taken all the money that the country has who has resources out here in D.C., New York, and everywhere else, in Paris, and everywhere else, using, controlling the media, controlling, I mean, everyone uh, to uh, government officials, corrupted. And what are they doing? They are trying to get any type of intervention so that they can come back in power. This is how bad the game is. Wow. And we Africans, African-Americans, black people need to wake up because every time we see a news about an African country and how horrible they are to each other, that's going to that means it's telling you there is something of interest there. And usually it has to do with resources because Africa has a lot of resources now. Mm-hmm. We as a, Af- the African continent is probably the only continent that has the most important things that the rest of the world needs. Always has. Mm-hmm. And so all eyes on these countries and they want regime changes based on who's going to sell and who's going to benefit us. Right. So our voice is literally uh, not being heard. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you At know, the that's... Idea. At the same time, just to put some, uh, you know, point to what she's saying, the sister from Ethiopia, is that since uh, they don't want us to be controlling our own uh, natural resources or our uh, country ruling our own country mm-hmm. and based in our people and uh, self-reliance for example taken as an uh, Eritrea path how we want to control which is self-reliance is just what El Nipsey learned when he went back to Eritrea when he went back to Eritrea, he sees the country is governed by black. The, 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 the country is, uh, all the students' uh, education is free. Mm-hmm. Uh, Health care is free. And uh, all the region are united, all the young people uh, the, uh, from different nine nationality, uh, ethnic groups, they get along. They respect each other's culture. Mm-hmm. When uh, he see this, he say, what going on in L.A. or the United States? We killing each other brother to brother instead of shaking hands, uh, uh, exchange businesses and other things we killing each other. Who's doing this? There's somebody behind. It's a design. Mm-hmm. So for that reason, when he experienced that, there is no 
violence down there. He was walking all over. He see women walking at two o'clock in the morning. Nobody uh, care about it. You don't look back. It's, it's kind of something is going to happen to you, like here. So when he say, what, why can't we have that also in the United States? So he brought uh, that culture. Uh, he sees some uh, all the people, one family, like I'm talking about the family value, how mm -hmm. important it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually, he did say here when he was inter you guys interviewed here. You have a breakfast with the whole family. Mm -hmm. and then you go back. The student go to work. I mean to the school, and uh, whoever going to from the family go to work, and then they come back. They have lunch together, mm -hmm. and she said, "How was your day?" The student is there, and then after that they go back to work, and they come back have dinner together. You see how they interact? How was their day? That family value is very important. So the same uh, look up, up here, for example, from my own experience. Because you have to feed your family, uh, you don't have no time. So you work two jobs. So at the end of the day, when the, who, who raised the kids? The babysitter or the... After that, they, they grow up. Mm -hmm. And you go say, he talk to his daddy, say, hey, I'm your daddy. And they say, no, I don't know you. Who are you? Well, I've been working hard mm -hmm. to, to, to feed you guys, to bring some food in the table. And the kids say, you know what? I wish I had one meal a day. And you come here, spend some time with me. That would have been even better. Wow. You know? mm -hmm. This is what we have there. And then at the same time, look how uh, African-American, uh, the, the, the jail become an industry. So all the African-American, because of uh, smoking and marijuana, they put them a goddamn 10 years in jail. Mm -hmm. And then the bride, the, 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 our women, they have to raise the kids, single mother. But they, they make them look good. Oh, I'm a single mother. They think, but there is no father in the house. There is no role model. This is designed to have, be happen like that. So the men, the women, they disrespect their men because they, they couldn't feed or they couldn't uh, help their the, the children. Mm -hmm. But it's not their fault. Even after they did their time in jail, when they come out, they cannot find a job. That's real. Because of felony. That's right. real. So they did their, they, they pay their price, but how come they cannot vote? So what do they do? They involve with gangs or they uh, being killers or whatever to survive. But they look, and then in Africa, this is what they show us. They don't show us a lot of Americans, they work hard. African American, they got work two jobs, but what they show us, somebody you know go to uh, a liquor store and uh, uh, do rob it. Rob rob it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't show us the right thing. The same thing that for you guys, they don't show you what uh, in, in America. They don't show us what's going on in Africa. The mm -hmm. lot of development, Eritrea is one of them. Mm -hmm. huh? And they say that we don't need no handouts. We want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, help ourselves. But if we do need some help, we will welcome you. And then uh, if uh, America, other countries, European, they say, we want some, we are looking for our interest. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what about the, uh, the, the other countries' interest? So we are welcome, we will protect your interest, but it has to be mutual. Right. So we stay in self awareness we're gonna be on our own, because if they control, they will control you. If right. they, they feed you or they give you the money or they control you, and then you, you know you, that's it. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot get out, just like what they're doing now to Ethiopia and Eritrea. They sanction them because if you don't listen to me, if you don't go with the way I want you to do, then I'm gonna, you know, sanction, sanction. Wow. So what? What well, can you? He wants to say something. Oh, yeah, um, say. You know, when it comes to like actually, if you're if you're from the outside looking in and you're just trying to get um, an understanding about like all this disinformation. Actually, um, there's a recent report uh, by New Africa Institute, which we recently published um, back on May 9th, which goes through, it's 72 pages, has 300 references. So you could just sit there and go through all the stuff that they've lied about, the propaganda, the narratives, exactly how it works, all the stuff you know we've been mentioning about like the details of how you know, um, stuff is manufactured. 
um, what they're, you know, all this information, this disinformation is manufactured, it's all in there. And what they're trying to do, again, I just want to emphasize, they want to take these countries to war because they represent resistance on the African continent. And this is really the last bastion of resistance there. And we all have to stand up and there has to be a sense of urgency. So when you see something that seems like, you know, it's a, you know, uh, gang rape or sexual violence or, you know, massacre or whatever, we can't just take it at face value because the thing is, is that um, TPLF is manufacturing this stuff, but again, they only represent 6% of the population there, but not even that 6%. They represent an elite group. A lot of them are these activists are here in the diaspora that actually used, uh, we, we don't have time to go into this, but just they've used migration as this policy to basically, uh, we're using Eritrean identity and an Eritrean name to bring a lot of these activists from there to here to then use them to then attack uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia. And so we have to be very cognizant of the fact that when you're talking to somebody here and they say, hey, get behind this genocide that's going on, you have to understand that it's not, you have to be very critical. You have to have a very critical eye when you receive this information. And I know there's some people who go out, you know, I'm not going to mention names, but certain celebrities who have caught on to some things and then kind of pulled back afterwards, feeling a little bit like, oh, my God, like, who was I talking to? Because mm -hmm. tribalism is a very serious problem in Africa, and it is a sickness that ex exists in Ethiopia because of th almost thir three decades of a system called ethnic federalism. What's that? Uh, so basically, if you could just imagine in California, if here and if we were to apply it in America, imagine you said that California is Asia land, um, Texas is Mexico land, Mississippi is black land, um, you know, Nebraska is white land or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you just go down the list. Obviously, that's going to lead to tensions. You're going to, what are you going to do? You're going to do three things. You're going to argue over borders and territories. Mm -hmm. You're going to fight over resources. Yeah. And then you're also going to ethnically cleanse to purify your little area. The so government will fund one. I'm sure the government will fund one more than the other. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so what they did is they did this to enrich the Tigray region, but they didn't even give that money to the average Tigrayan peasant. Like I said, 1.5 million people were on food aid, even though they, they stole 30 billion over a 10 year period. God knows how much throughout the entire, their entire reign. So what I'm saying is that basically you have people who have looted the country, who do not represent the people, who uh, have almost destroyed that country, but it's like a godsend. Prime Minister Abiy has risen. The people are behind him with these attacks on, to, on uh, the Northern Command. Like they, 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 they stopped that immediately. And within three weeks, we're able to defeat it. And honestly, this is like one of the greatest victories, I think, you know, in this in my generation, like it came out of nowhere. The peace that was the peace deal with Eritrea, with Somalia, um, the change that's happening right now. There's a there's a feeling of like we're 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 gonna make it. We're gonna make it out of this horrible situation that we've been in for so long. And so uh, us here in the diaspora, we're connected with our people back there always, and we feel as though we have to speak up. We have to do something, and we also understand that the 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 the, the TP these activists who who come on we feel as though they're misguided mm -hmm. and we have to educate them as well. So it's, it's, we have to be sensitive about this stuff because they instilled this identity war among the people of Ethiopia. Some of these people feel like, oh, if we don't support TPLF, we're gonna lose our identity as Tigrayan people. Some of them, small few believe that. And so we have to, we have to actively work to convince them that no, it's, it's, not, it's not the case. You have to look beyond this. It's about like, you know, that love, that respect, that humanity and all that stuff. We have to find it within ourselves now mm -hmm. to bring us together. And, and, and then the resistance part is to stop what the United States and the EU are trying to do to Eritrea, to Ethiopia in the name of the Tigrayan people. Because there is no, no proof of genocide, of ethnic cleansing. Um, like she said, there may be some atrocities um, because of in war, when there's things are going on, things may happen. But mm -hmm. we can investigate that. That's not an issue. We can look into that. But when you have a fishing expedition, when somebody's just actively looking to find a problem so they can come attack you, uh, we're not going to send you in. Let's do it the right way. So this is an African problem. We want African solutions. We don't need Western wow. colonization, these you know, master coming on in, trying to tell us what to do. And um, they can help. You know, There's no problem with help. But that's what I was going to ask. Is there anything Americans or people outside of Eritrea yeah. can, can do to help? Or what outside of Ethiopia can do to help? Yeah, what, what helps the situation and not hurts it? Um, I think, I mean, you know, like people need to just, one, be aware of it because, um, you know, our representatives, our Congress um, uh, reps are, you know, are working on these things. 
uh, as much as you know the regular American is not paying attention to it, they are actively functioning and working on it. I mean, uh, Ethiopia was just sanctioned about what two, not even two weeks ago, uh, that um, uh, officials from Ethiopia cannot get visa, and they're planning on economic sanctions and so forth. And you know, all this is happening. It's just like saying, imagine Biden being sanctioned by an African country for having 19,000 people die of gunshots. Because if you ask me, that's 19,000 citizens is, is serious, right? And Africa countries, African countries, sometimes are being sanctioned for uh, people less, that, that, uh, less than that number. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really about equality. It's really about how do we respect each other and how do we help each other if really if we really want to help each other? Or is it a situation where it's a different type of colonial, you know, we're colonizing mm -hmm. uh, and saying, you know, the U.S. is going to say, stop raping your your people. No, there is no government. Dr. Abi is the Ethiopian prime minister, and he just came on three years ago. He has no intentions of having a group of his people raped just like Biden does not have any intention of having 19,000 of his citizens killed. So stop the demonizing of Ethiopian nations, I mean, or African black nations, mm -hmm. by saying that we all we are doing is killing each other. What we do need to do is, they have already promised investigation, they've already actually done investigation, they've taken some people to court, um, it's gonna continue, um, but the bigger, the bigger thing is that we as voters need to pay attention to foreign policy as well. That's pertaining especially to Africa. We really need to know where they stand, our representatives stand, because I'm personally very disappointed with the Democratic Party Same. That, that I voted for. I actually prefer Trump calling us shithole countries and not coming in there and interfering the way the Democrats are interfering. I feel like the Democratic Party is using lobbyists. Mm -hmm. To me, that's corruption, right? Trump talked about that. I, you know, he, he was absolutely right. I'm in D.C. Now lobbyists are back in D.C. making all kinds of money. This is really gangster, making decisions on other people's lives and countries. We need to wake up to that. And as black voters, too, really, we shouldn't just be automatic Democratic anymore. I, I, I really dig what people like P. Diddy said. We need to stop that. We really need to have some kind of understanding that we need to know what the policies are going to be, not just for Africa, but for even for within the country policies in regards to incarceration, health care, everything. And right now, the Democratic Party is not delivering for us, especially in the African front. Yeah, I think Democrats and Republicans are, are, are two wings of the same bird. Exactly. You know, I just think I just think black people, black people, we just need something different. I don't I don't think it's conservative either, but it's just we need something different. I agree. I mean, we yeah. saw what happened over this past year. It's been a year of resistance. A lot of people came out with you know various issues, obviously. Uh, the the police murders of black people in America is the you know most prominent issue, and we need to solve that. Um, and what we're seeing is that when you go to these protests and in the streets, you know, there, occasionally there's the person who gives you the you know the hey vote for this whatever. We need to start looking beyond voting and actually mobilizing people on the ground. So if they're going to take Eritrea Ethiopia to war, we shouldn't be talking about who to vote for. I mean, that, you can add that as a little adjunct. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is what materially are you doing to stop this? Like, what are you mobilizing people on the ground? Are you sending stuff back there to, to stop this, this problem? So I think we need to focus on that. And also the media, the media thing. So being vocal about this thing. Mm -hmm. If you see, follow us, follow what we're saying and promote you know, our work that we're doing because we're putting this stuff out there for everyone to, um, to understand. So, uh, you know, hashtags like hands off Ethiopia, hands off Eritrea, um, things like that you can get behind. Um, and me personally, I say join revolutionary organizations. <laughs> that I believe we should, we should start thinking about in that sense, but let's not go on that. The focus is right now is there's a war that's being um, pushed for uh, a NATO, potentially NATO war, the same thing that happened in Libya. I mean, the, you know, we're talking about uh, slave markets, open slave markets in Libya. How did this happen? 
Mm-hmm. This is the work of the United States. This is the work of the EU. Uh, they, they took that country to war, destroyed that country. And that was one of the most developed countries in Africa. And so now um, you're looking at a similar situation where you have the last, again, the last bastion of resistance could be wiped off the map. And that should, stri- that should strike fear in everyone. Why? Because if you lose that, where's the resistance going to come from? Like, where is the homeland for black people, the African people worldwide? We need to have something where we can, we, a pivot, where we have something where we can say we have this, we own this, we control this. And if we, if we lose that, what do we have? So, um, Listen, yes. simple and plain. I mean, I, I, I love all the information y'all giving out. Who is the enemy? Just who is the enemy? Greed. Greed. The, mm-hmm. the, I mean, it comes down to the ruling class. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it comes down to the ruling it's, class. It's uh, greed, mm-hmm. and but then you know, uh, just recently we had you know in the capital we had some people just storming the capital and you know um, wanting the previous administration to take over. Right. Right now, when that happened in Ethiopia. The Western world is telling us to negotiate with them. So it's a double standard. You know mm-hmm. why? Um, because if you, the reason why is because they want chaos to continue. Mm-hmm. They don't want root law and order. This actual um, conflict was called a law operation, you know, law enforcement operation, because it's, it's, it's a law enforcement operation. When someone attacks your own base defense base it's a law enforcement operation mm. i think we have a common enemy common enemy for the whole world and that is look in america five percent of american well is controlled by five percent of the population the rest 95 percent are living you know check paycheck to paycheck so there's a common enemy that uh, we need to fight here and all over the world. I'm not saying capitalism is good. I, I'm, I'm good for some people to, you know, there's opportunity to grow up, an opportunity, but it has to be balanced. So give up, we, have, we need a government who uh, help the majority of the people mm-hmm. to uplift them, give them opportunity and educate them. And once you do that, that means, um, the country, you know, people think it's good for business. If I make extra money, uh, what do I do? I'm going to go spend it. And the, the, the person who has a restaurant, this is a simple economics, one on one. So, but right now, you have to work two jobs. Mm-hmm. Even if you work two jobs, you can't pay uh, your bills or you don't have any money left to go take your children to a restaurant. So, this is fundamental has to be changed and the people need to wake up. Waking up meaning just, uh, I'm working, it has to be. In America, you have to work eight hours, you should be able to pay your rent, you should be able to pay uh, all your expenses and still you should have some money left to spend to take your um, your children to go to movie or Disney or something. Universal Studios. Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this is the common, um, you see, we need to, uh, just like, uh, for example, the, you know, one person, we, there is books and stuff, and the people need to read it, and they need to get the, the, their country back. But, you know, we elect our people, and they say, our representative, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Mm-hmm. And we vote for them. Then once they get into office, forget them. Mm-hmm. They, they they just listen to the lobbyist. So n- 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 this need to be um, aware and people need to be educated. Just like you guys uh, have this uh, platform, where you can bring people who really represent and tell what's going on. We appreciate you guys for coming up and sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I just got a couple Thank more questions. I, I was I was even wanted to ask about Tiffany because I see some people mad at Tiffany, but. I see, you know, you retweet her a lot, so you clearly are proud of the way she represents Eritrea, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, because she's telling the truth, uh, and she is, uh, uh, have a a lot of uh, represent, I mean, followers, and she's been in Eritrea. She has seen, uh, you know, how the people working, trying to build bridges, trying to build uh, water sewages, and uh, 
the construction of uh, the country mm -hmm. uh, after 30 years of uh, devastating and war. Uh, the, the, the government is doing everything it can to spend every penny for the benefit of the people. Transportation, he health care, uh, and all of these things. So when she went over there and see everything, she's trying to educate American people. Mm -hmm. And this one, uh, and she have a follower, she gonna, they're going to hear her. For that is the same thing what uh, Hermes was doing, NIP. So they don't want the awareness, so they're trying to hammer her and make her look bad. Like, like a bad person. She, like yeah. she's supporting uh, genocide and stuff like that. Yep. Wow. You know, even with, with, with NIP, you know, um, people love Nipsey's mindset, but a lot of his mindset was impacted by Eritrean culture. So what are the morals and values of the culture that you would tell people to tap into? Yeah, I see, uh, both of them, Hermes and Samuel, uh, when they were little, I used to take them to, uh, you know, uh, Eritrean community. Uh, I used to take them to, uh, like, a wedding. So they started, at the early age, they started learning the culture. Then they went to grow up, and then when we went to Africa, to Eritrea 2005, and they see it, everything, like earlier I've been explaining to you, they see uh, the people, the, the, the family value, and how they're trying to uh, bring together all their nationalities, and the young people, they respect each other. They respect uh, their culture, each, each culture, each, cu each uh, sure. So when he see this, he just say, hey, why can't we do it in, in, in America? Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, I can do this because he have a, a choice. He was uh, in, because he was influenced by the neighborhood, like everybody. There's a gang violence that he cannot get out. So there's one, two paths. Either you're gonna continue the wrong way, or you're gonna go do the right thing. That's so right. he chose to do the right thing, but not only for himself, but also for his, uh, you know, people. That's why he started. I gotta go this way. So that culture that he see people eating together, uh, different culture, different ethnic group, uh, living in peace together, and uh, sharing uh, their culture, enjoying it. When he see that, and the peaceful. For that reason, he say, I gotta do it over here too. So he did it in his community. Right. Mm? And then that's why he was talking again and again. If we can happen that over there, we can happen over here too. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's what influenced him first at the early age by communicating and going to the culture. At the same time, when he got there, see it with his own eyes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he, he changed the game. Yeah. How, 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 okay. so, travel uh, to Africa. Oh, go ahead, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so traveling, you can. Go right. to travel, yeah, travel to Ethiopia, so, yeah. travel to Eritrea. Yeah, I always, um, you know, I, always, I mean, even even though I've done my DNA test and I know where I'm connected to in the motherland, I always envy people who actually have like that direct mm -hmm. connection, like the Nipsey's, like the, like the Tiffany's. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, you're always welcome. You're always welcome to come out to. Yeah. You Eritrea. sure? Because yeah, 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 we're holding yeah, up we the flag. Will. Look at yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you're good. Anytime okay. you want to come, we got you. Um, and I also want to say, um, with, with all this disinformation stuff, I just, it's very important because, um, you know, you have to really dig deep. And so there's this, the, the report that I mentioned, you can find it at newafricainstitute.org. And I want to make sure that people have the chance to go out there and check that out, download that report. Uh, Tiffany, um, actually, uh, you know, posted that on her Twitter page. So I just want to make that available for everybody. Make sure that they can, they can get that. Newafricainstitute.org. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Well, thank you guys again for joining us. Sure. Yeah, hey, I want to say something, you know, first of all, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I've been here for four years, uh, first time I came. And I went to Brandeis High School here. So uh, thank you for giving, you know, New Yorkers. What part of New York? Uh, uh, Central Park, 84th Street Central Park. Oh, I think somebody yeah. showed me a and, uh, picture. Lewis D. Brandeis High School, I finished here. Somebody okay. showed me a picture of you protesting. Was it here in New York? Maybe that was LA. Yeah, that was in New York. That was in New York, yeah, right? Yeah, that was in New York. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I learned a lot here. This is down to the, the, the uh, New Yorkers, and you, you know, in New Yorker, you, you gave him love for my son, and he loved it back here. So not only here, uh, I just want to mention how much uh, you know uh, they uh, 
gave us love mm -hmm. all over the world. Uh, how much uh, they encourage us, uh, our family going through a lot, and uh, what makes us a uh, uh, little better is because, I'll give you an example, for example, a couple of examples. You know, uh, for example, I went to Cheesecake uh, to eat uh, dinner to invite me, my friends. Cheesecake Factory? Cheesecake Factory. Mm -hmm. We got. We, we need you to do better, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we can take you to some better places. I, know. I love anyway, the Cheesecake Factory. They took me over there, but... Come on, Steve. I ate, we eat eating over there, <laughs> and there was a 10 years old having a uh, birthday mm -hmm. with his mother, single mother. So he saw me, and he goes, Mommy, if you want to make my birthday the best birthday I ever had, that's it. The one that's sitting over there is that, uh, Nipsey's dad. Wow. I want to take a picture with you. Wow. And then she came, and she said, uh, I'm sorry you are eating, but, you know, my son is saying like this. I said, oh, come on, tell him, bring him over here. And I come, I hug him, he took a picture with me, and I told him, why did you listen to be like Nipsey? Because I want to be like him. Because I don't have to be a rapper, but I want to be, like he told us, anything that I want to be when I grow up, I'm going to be like him. I wow. work hard and everything. I was amazed. But I make his day, mm -hmm. his birthday, beautiful because Nipsey. So that makes me uh, feel good and the family, how, you know, what he left to me as. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in here. The same thing, another one. I went to visit his uh, grave. And this guy, he's an Asian guy. He came over there. And he heard people passing, and he said that his dad is over there. And he came to me, can I talk to you? I said, Go ahead. And he said, look, I am taking school to be an AP physician, doctor, but I gave up. It's too much for me. But somebody suggested that uh, listen to Nip's music. And then when I listened, he just gave me uh, hope and, and then I just graduated. New energy, man. I yeah. just graduated and I become a doctor. Wow. Now I came here to his grave to give him my respect. Oh, wow. And I just found you here, his father, coincidence, and I just want to wow. tell you, thank you very much. Yeah. So when you hear these things, I say, thank you, thank you, all over the world. He, they're making us the family, like uh, we didn't lost uh, Ermia, he still with us. You know, I was going to ask you, you know, I didn't, you know, didn't want to bring it up because we were talking about other business, but, you know, I, I was wondering, when it comes to healing, does it make it easier or harder because you hear it and see Nipsey's face and name everywhere? Well, yeah, it is very difficult. Yeah, everywhere you go, you see it. But just like I say, uh, the love that we're getting, you know, the, 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 the artist is everywhere. They put him there. They just uh, they, they recognize him, what kind of person he was. He gave love, and then they want to give him love. But it is uh, the, the the love they given us. The uh, everywhere we go, uh, you know, they give us a peace, and uh, we're driving in the uh, freeway. They roll their windows, and then they go like this. I mean, it is amazing. That keeps us, you know, uh, mm -hmm. more uh, to heal and become stronger. We also got to say thank you. I mean, the way he was raised, the morals, the integrity. Mm -hmm. We say thank you because that that energy that you gave him, he gave to the world. That's right. So yeah. we just say thank you. How, how does the family plan to continue honoring his legacy? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. See, this is very difficult, you know, uh, but uh, we hang in there, mm -hmm. and we are doing everything that uh, to keep his legacy, what he was trying to do, and we're trying to continue doing it, and uh, a lot of things coming very soon. The uh, Melrose, the store is going to be opening, and uh, uh, Cross is going, is doing good. It's going to school, and uh, Imani is growing. She's doing great. She's a good student. Mm -hmm. So we hang in there. The family is getting together. Absolutely. And Sam is working hard to to do that too, also. So with the support of the people, patronizing us to, you know, shopping, coming, give us uh, uh, the support. So uh, we're doing okay. Well, you know, under the circumstance. Well, we're sending you healing energy always, sending the family healing energy always, sending Eritrea and Ethiopia healing energy always, and 
Yeah, thank y'all for coming, thank man. So much. No, thank Appreciate you so y'all. much for having us. Oh, thank, thank you. you. It's the Breakfast Club. Absolutely. Good morning.